Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday. I'm sorry I'm a little late. Um, I was looking for the settings to test closed captioning today. Um, so we'll see if that works. I believe I turned it on. Um, what we're going to do today is talk about my Japanese cotton shorts that I'm working on. And if you remember, I decided to cut them out on the bias. Now, every now and then I do one of these things where I kind of go off the rails and I try something with the expectation I'll be able to make it work out. So as you know, cutting things out on the bias can cause issues with the fit because when I tested the fit of my shorts in a lightweight woven, it was straight on the grain and then I was feeling the fabric and, you know, I thought to myself, this fabric is pretty, um, you know, it's pretty stable. So you can see this is the bias and you can see it doesn't really give that much in either direction. So when I was um, playing with pulling it on the different grain lines just to see what it would do, I thought I'm going to cut these out on the bias. So that's what I did. And I think they're going to be okay, but I had a little issue. So what I want to do now is let me just show you. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. We don't need all of that. I can move this over here a little bit. All right. So, hey, Julie, happy Friday afternoon. Welcome. Um, I'm showing you my, my shorts here. And as you can see, I attached a waistband back on it. And I'll explain why in a minute. But basically, I cut these out, and I, after testing the pattern, I cut them out, and then I um, tried them on. And I just want to show you here this picture. Okay, so see right here, you can see, I'm just going to blow out the my exposure here a little bit so you can really see what it looks like. So I was marginally happy with the way this looked. Hey, NC17, I turned the closed captioning, um, I turned it on, I turned it on in my settings and I also turned it um, on, I turned it on in my settings for my channel and I also turned it on on the stream. So if it's not working, I don't know why it's not working. Um, so let me just show my husband something here. So see this right here? This is in the settings section of the channel, and you can see I turned on subtitles and closed captioning. Always show captions, include auto-generated captions. I turn those things on on my channel, and then on the studio, um, streaming studio thing, I also click closed captioning on. So if it's not working, I don't know why it's not working. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but getting back to my pants, you can see here, I'm I'm marginally okay with this. I mean, I think in the big scheme of things, what I'd like to see with these pants is um, what's going to happen when I sit in them and they stretch. Because you know, bias tends to stretch out as you're wearing it. So I did that, but then I wanted to bring up the front crotch. So what I did was I took the inseam out and I sewed the inseam deeper in the front, straight through the crotch points, shortening the crotch point to pick it up. And it sort of made a mess. I'm going to show you that. And this is actually the thumbnail for um, the video that I'm doing right now. And you can see it's kind of grabbing into my butt. So I thought to myself, all right, I want to try to pull them up and I want to try to figure out what's going on. So what I did was I, see if I can show you what I did here. Just going to briefly show you, I'm going to put my thumb over the side where my butt is hanging out, but you can see I, um, I took them apart and I made them a single leg muslin again. And basically what I did was I played with the waist and I think this brings the, the, um, the issue of 
What are we doing here when we're fitting pants? When we're using a separate waistband? We're getting the waistband on our body, right? And then we're using that anchor to drape the fabric onto the leg. Now, I don't think the problem was caused by me cutting it out on the bias versus having it be straight. But I also think it's really important when you put that waistband on, after you do all your fitting and then you put the pants back on after you have both legs sewn together, that you also obviously have them at the waist at the same level as you did when you were fitting. Now, obviously that makes sense and obviously we know to do that, but you know in the process of fitting, things always happen. So let me just stop and say, hi, Judith. Um, trousers are your problem just now? Oh, good. Well, that's what we're going to be dealing with today. And hi, Diane. Welcome. Um, all right. So let me go back to this view here. And what I want to show you is I decided because I couldn't get the, um, you know, I put the pants on as a two-leg muslin and I just... I was trying to take it in, like I said, by sewing in deeper here, like basically doing this in the front crotch to bring that up, and it caused that grabbing on the back leg. Let me just remind you what the, the grabbing looked like. So see the grabbing kind of looked like that, not attractive. Hey Mary, welcome. So I took it apart, and I took one of the legs off. I basically made it a single leg muslin again. Okay, so what I was able to do is get it fitting kind of like, let me just crop this picture so it's, I can show you. Um, I just didn't want to be running around in my underwear today. So basically, this is how I got it to look when I went back to the single leg muslin. And what I want to show you here is notice I had to pull the center back way past center going, you know, away past center, which means I think I need to angle my center back seam a little bit more. And then notice it's higher up on the waist. Okay, so basically I had to readjust where it was going to attach to my waist to get it to hang better. So I just thought this was an interesting concept that if you've already cut out your fashion fabric, you've already sewn your front pockets because you can see here, here's what my front pocket looks like. Okay. And in this situation, I decided to not use a fashion fabric facing. I'm just using the, um, you know, the, the, the Japanese cotton pocket bag to show through because I thought that made a neat detail to have that different kind of fabric there. Um, and then when I put them on, I wasn't happy with the fit and I wanted to fuss with it some more. So I guess it's okay to go back to a single leg and play with it some more. So just know that, you know, there are things that you can do if when you, when you're all said and done, and if you thought you thought you had it fitted, um, and you weren't happy, you can go back to a single leg muzzle and put it back on the waistband. So you'll notice here, one of the things I didn't like about the fit of it the first time was I thought the crotch was hanging down a little bit too low. So you can see here, I actually can cut off a whole inch. So I was able to drag it up an inch. And then if we look here, I'd have to drag up the whole side edge an inch. But then when I get to the back, look at this. The back ended up being this much shorter. So almost, almost two inches shorter. So that's how I got it to fit better. So I'm going to go ahead and make those changes to the muslin. I mean, uh, to my, I'm going to cut off this extra length. And then I'm going to transfer it to the second leg and I'm going to sew it back together. So I don't know if this will be perfect, but again, you know, this was expensive fabric and I really took a risk <laughs> to cut it out on the bias without testing it on the bias first. But I think doing this will help. So that also brings my point to when you're working with the, the Velcro, really just baste it in um, using the largest straight stitch you have. 
just so you can easily take it back off because this is on my actual garment now. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mark the stitching line is the top of the Velcro. And I think I've gone through this with you guys, um, you know, when you're fitting your pants, if you're doing this single leg muslin and also the, um, the separate waistband, we know that the very top of the Velcro marks the stitching line to sew on the waistband. So what I'm going to do here is I want to be able to see, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just measure up a, so here's the, here's the base of the Velcro. I'm going to measure up another half an inch from that and I'm going to put a pin and that's what I'm going to cut off. So basically I'm going to go around and I'm literally just going to mark it with pins because I don't want to mark, um, I don't want to mark my fashion fabric with anything just in case. So I'm going to find the, the, the Velcro, which is right here, and then I'm going to go up a half an inch and I'm just going to mark it all the way around like that. I'm going to take this pin out now so I don't get confused. So basically, again, I'm feeling for the Velcro and then I'm going up a half an inch and I'm just going to mark it. Velcro, half an inch. And then I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to use it as a pattern piece to trim the other side. So that's what I'm going to do here. So notice also I, um, when I took it off, I didn't um, take the fabric off the waistband. I left it on the waistband and I actually added a few pins so it wouldn't come separated from the pant so I could save my work. Because if you take it off of the, if you take the fabric off the waistband to get it off of you, then you're not going to have a record of where the vertical seam is. So see what I'm doing is I'm just marking my seam here. And again, let me just put one here. I'm just going to put one right here. I can kind of eyeball a half an inch right there. All right, so here's the other fun thing I'm going to do with this. Let me just put one more right here. All right, I'm just gonna put this right here. All right, so that's what I'm gonna cut off. So now that I've got it marked, hey Andrea, welcome. Glad you're joining me here. All right, so I'm gonna take it off now, right? I don't need my waistband anymore. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I am going to, the, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Velcro off. And literally, now, I don't recommend ripping it off like I'm ripping it off um, because your fabric might also rip, but you want to carefully take off the, the Velcro so I can use that on another pair of pants. Oh, the other thing I should have marked was how far... Um, how far past center the top of this was and it was about an inch so I'm just gonna mark it here an inch so my stitching line needs to be more angled okay so what I'm talking about is when I was fitting this on me here's my center of my back waistband I had this way over here I had it like this I want to say it was probably like that so see how my center back I had to pull it past center to get it to fit right. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is my stitching line right here because that looks about what I had. And I know I'm guessing, but that's pretty close. All right, so again, I'm taking off the Velcro. Diane says I'm being very brave. Well, at this point, you know when you get to the point in a project where you're like, I don't wanna say screw this, but <laughs> I thought I had it perfect and then when I, put it on it wasn't perfect so I'm a little I don't want to say annoyed I'm not annoyed I'm just I thought it was going to be fabulous all right so now what I'm going to do 
is, um, here's the fun fact. Because of my rectangle shape, I don't have a defined waist. I can actually make these pull on. So I'm going to get rid of my um, fly detail on this and I'm going to make these pull on. Now the only way you can make pants pull on if you're making a non-stretch or a um, pants pattern that's not, I mean a fabric that's not super stretchy, like even though I cut it on the bias, notice the top doesn't stretch at all because I cut my pocket bags out straight of grain. So my pocket bags are straight of grain, so it's preventing the top of this from stretching. So um, the only way you can make pull-on pants in these situations is if the opening that's left to go up to your waist comes up over your hip. If you can't pull it on with the center front and back sewn up all the way, you cannot make pull-on pants um, like this. I mean, out of non-stretch fabric. So I'm basically just going to cut this. Wait a minute, let me just move this over a little bit like that. So I'm just lining this up and I'm literally going to cut off this fly detail because I'm not having it. And my, I'm literally just going to cut this off. So that takes care of that issue. So from the inside, you can see it's going to look like that. I'm just going to sew my center fronts together all the way up. Um, and then I'm going to Oh, you know what I'll do? I am going to stitch because I've got layers and with the pockets and everything, there's some layers. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stitch along my pins. This is going to be my cutting line, but I'm going to stitch there and then I'll know where to um, cut. And actually, I am going to change my thread color so we can see it. I'm going to make it, let's make it white or light, and this way we'll be able to see the line. If I sewed it in black, I think I'd be very hard pressed to see it. All right, so I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna sew right here along my pins, and then I'll know where to cut it off. So let's find my pin cushion and let's just sew this. So I'm basically just going to sew from pin to pin to pin. When I get to my seam allowance, I'm going to stop because I, um, I didn't finish the edges yet, so I don't want to sew across my my seam allowance is there, so I'm just going to skip over that and I'm just going to create a nice smooth line front to back. Like this. gonna go straight across here. All right. All right, so you can see here, now you can see the little, I think you can see the little stitching. So without any like reel to do, I'm literally just gonna cut it right above the stitching. So especially in the front, it'll hold my pocket piece together. I'm literally just cutting this all off. I'm going to lose a little bit of my pocket, but I don't care. We're going to just go with this. So see, I'm just literally trimming like a sixteenth of an inch or less above my stitching that I use to mark where I'm going to cut. Like this. Okay. All right. So there's the new waistline of my pants. So now to transfer it to this one, I'm going to start by 
cutting off and I can use this as a pattern piece, right? Just to make sure I do the exact same thing to both. I'm literally just gonna cut this off. Ruler. So that's gonna get rid of that. And then I'm gonna use this okay so we got to turn it upside down though so here is my front I'm just gonna use this as a guide to cut off oh you know what let's just pin it so I can um, Let's just pin it so I can draw the line. I'm just going to pin along this edge. You can see that this fabric frays like a mother. So I should have clean finished these edges because I lost like a quarter inch here. See how frayed that is? All right, so now I'm just going to mark this. Okay. Okay, so that's where I'm going to cut. So when I sew on this side, I'm going to sew like ever so high like a little sixteenth of an inch higher than the pins. Oh, I'm sorry, below the pin. I'm sorry. So when I cut it, I'll have that it stitched. All right, Mary's saying, when I get that same feeling when sewing doesn't go like I think it should, I walk away for a day or so, and then, and when completed, I'm literally putting it and then when completed, I literally put it out of my sight. Ugh. Well, I will tell you that I have been slow sewing here, meaning I haven't been, you know, normally when I'm working on a new pair of pants for myself or something, I start it and I finish it. Like I, I, I motor through, but my new um, philosophy is more of a slow sewing so I've been taking my time, and I'll tell you, that's giving me the um, the benefit of, you know, not, you know, giving me this time to reconsider my choices. Let's put it that way. All right, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to stitch over my side seam. And so what I'm doing is I'm literally, see how... The pin is there and I'm a, like a sixteenth of an inch below. That way when I cut it, the cutting will be the same. Okay. And I think what I'll do is, let me just see what I have here. Um, I'm just gonna take the other one So this is my center back right here. See the crotch? I'm gonna just give it a, let me, I'm just gonna put this one inside this one so I can, I just wanna verify that the center backs are the same. So I'm lining up my seam allowances of the center back. I'm just gonna walk it up. I just wanna make sure that when I cut this off, it's gonna match up. Of course, I pulled on one of them. Oh, wait a minute. I have to put it inside out. Sorry. All right. So let me get this in here. Okay. So I've got my crotch. And I'm going to make the seam allowance lay flat with this one. 
so all those match up. I'm just going to put a clip there to hold it. And again, like I said, I'm just checking to make sure that my center back, how am I not on my center back? What is happening right now? This is, oh, I am on my center back, sorry. Being silly. This, okay, so I'm getting my center backs together and I just wanna make sure that they match up and then I'm also going to check my center front. All right, so see, we can see that I'm going to steam this crotch area before I clean finish it. But basically, I can see that these are going to match up okay. See, when I go to sew those, that's going to match up okay. I just wanted to make sure after cutting off the rise, my crotch is going to match. And so here's my center fronts. And again, I'm just going to double check and make sure those match up. Just lining up all the layers. All right, so we can see that that's going to match up too. So my center front and back rise are matching up, so I'm happy with that. And now what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to take these apart. I'm going to clean finish all the edges, and I'm going to sew it back together. And just to tell you the plans for all of this, let me just... I do with my seam ripper. I know I just had my seam ripper. What did I do with my seam ripper? I only have like eight seam rippers in this room. Here, I'll use one of the ones Diane sent me. Diane! Okay, let me just take this all apart here. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just steam all the edges and then I'm going to sew them back together. That's what I'm going to do. But first I'm going to clean finish everything too. Let me just take this apart. Oops. All right, so I've got my front leg and my back leg. So you can see this is kind of ratty looking here now. So I'm literally just going to steam all of this flat and then I'm going to clean finish everything and I'm going to sew it back together. Let me just do a little steaming while I have you on camera. Um, and then I'm hoping I will have shorts. I mean, I'm really happy with, um, this fabric and I think they're going to be nice, like a nice dressy pair of shorts. Um, but we have to get them finished before we can wear them. All right, so basically, let me move the front out of the way here. So we can see, this is one of the downfalls of, you know, working with your actual fabric. See, it's a little bit funked up there. So basically, I'm just going to steam it back into shape. I'm gonna do. See, I think that's coming back together into a nice shape now. Oh, Captain Connie. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, welcome. You're new. Thank you for joining me. Um, 
I like the idea of slow sewing. Take the time to remember you enjoy what you're doing. Of course, I do walk away when things aren't going well. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, part of slow sewing could be, all right, this isn't working out for me today, so I am going to come back and do it another day. So, um, you know. All right, so see, I think I'll be able to do, clean finish this just fine now. That I've see how I've kind of rehabbed the crotch curve. Let's see if I lay the back backs together if they match. You know, because when you cut something out on the bias, that's also another risky thing to do because bias shifts and changes shape. So let's see if I can line all this back up again. I really kind of feel like this was the perfect fabric to cut out on the bias because look how nicely I can rematch everything up. Like sometimes when you cut, cut something out on the bias, you can never get it to go back to its original shape. All right, so I do have an issue here, though. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, look at this. It's so much longer. Well, why is it longer? Because I didn't cut it off yet. Silly. Let me just cut it. I'm like, how could that have been? I thought I checked. All right. So now let's see if that lines up. See, I'm able to put everything right back. Notice now, this whole crotch curve is put back the way it was. It's going to give this one some steam too. So that's how I know they'll sew together nicely. But again, I'm going to clean finish all of these edges. Um, and then also notice, this is a good time to also notice that... Um, I only needed one dart for this. So I got this pants pattern. Um, this is my classic, my Sorsha classic, some trousers. There's two darts here. For me, I only needed one dart. And because I, I'm going to take in the center back, I basically rotated this dart off the back by just getting rid of this fabric here. So actually, that's another thing I can do. Now that I have them lying next to each other, I can say to myself, all right, I'm going to get rid of about an inch of extra right here. So I'm going to mark an inch here. And then what we're going to do is I'm not going to touch the curve itself. I'm just going to come to the curve like this. So you can see that's how... I got rid of some of the wrinkles by drawing more into the center front, the center back seam. Okay, so really the dart that was here, I basically rotated it off the pattern. And what that does is, let me just do a review for you here. When you have a dart in your pants pattern, this dart was added ease that was brought into the pattern. So um, just to show you here, I have my little whiteboard. So when you draft a pants pattern, basically you start out with a rectangle and you have, you know, you have a front and the back. So this is going to be your side seam section here. Let's just make it a little less dark here. So you, I mean a little less light so you can see better. Oops. Okay, so this is your side seam, right? This, somewhere down here, this is your full hip. So pants draft starts with the measurement of the full hip. To get the shape of the waist, you, you start from, okay, so this will be my center front, this will be my center back. You start from center front and you mark your waist measurement, right? And then you add whatever dart intake you're gonna add. So the darts actually, fabric is drawn into the, 
the pattern when you draft it. So if I'm going to say I'm going to need two one inch darts and I'm not going to do it in the front. So let's say my waist measurement in the front is right here. Let's say in the back, my waist measurement is here, but I'm going to add two one inch darts. So here's one inch and here's one inch. So here is my, my side seam is there. And so then what you do is you literally just draw, this is how your side seam happens like this to the full hip, to the full hip like this. And then you figure out where you're going to put those one inch darts. So let's say we put one here and one here, let's say. All right. So that's how a dart is incorporated into a pants pattern. But what is that doing? In addition to bringing the waist measurement back down to your waist, it's also drawing that fabric in and that it's directing it down the back of your leg, right? So in my case, I got rid of one of my darts, this one, and I'm taking it off over here. So I'm angling my center back. Like once I, well, that's another whole issue because we have to do the crotch curves. We haven't done that yet. But basically, I took one of my darts and I rotated it off the center back, meaning I have less fabric also coming over my butt. Does that make sense? So this dart here was brought into the pattern, right? Let me make it lighter again so you can see. So this dart was brought in past the, the back waist measurement and the fabric that I pinch out here, like let's say I pinch it out here. Well, I'm drawing the fabric into the pants pattern. So now that fa that fabric is you know, it's here, it's under the dart and it would kind of make a little butt shape, right? Because you've got, you've built an extra fabric there and that directs it wherever the dart is. That's why darts don't look good. Well, that's why it's possible for you to need to move your darts, change the length of your darts or eliminate a dart if you don't need it. So basically what I did here was I took the dart and I rotated it right off the pattern and basically what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to cut this off now. So I'm just going to cut right along my line. I almost never cut with scissors, but I have to say this feels very satisfying to cut with scissors. Okay. So now that's that's basically getting rid of fabric I did not need at my center back. All right. So here's what my crotch curve looks like now. It's got a little bit more, ouch, it's got a little bit more of an angle to here. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm going to be working on now. I'm really hoping um, this is, is this the last? We still have one more um, FabFit Friday this month. So next Friday, I'm hoping to have these all sewn together and I'm just going to show you some finishing details for this pattern because in May I'm going to switch my gears to a um, a sleeve fitting series. So I'm going to talk about different things to fit your sleeve. And part of someone on my um, commented under one of my videos, hey Diane Bacon, I didn't see you sneak in. Sorry, but I didn't notice you till this very second. Um, I'm going to show you how you can have your armhole ready to go and maybe add a little extra ease to the top of the cap and fit it onto you with that extra above the original cap line, kind of like we're doing with the waistline here to see if that helps in fitting a tricky sleeve. Um, oh, do you, Captain Connie likes my cool iron. This is an Aliso um, TG1600 Pro Plus iron. I love it because it's got the little feet. So when I put it down, it lifts up. So it's sort of Jennifer proof. I can't burn my surface because it literally pops up every time I take my hand off the, the thing. See, let me show you again. So see, it's down, it's up, down, up. 
down. The only the only thing about this that you have to be careful is when you're going to iron, make sure it's fully down before you start ironing. Because if you do this and then go like this, you can drag it across and the foot can get stuck. So you have to make sure that it's fully down before you start ironing. So that's the only downside to this iron, but I absolutely love it. Um, I have a link to the little mini iron underneath most of my videos. You can click over to Alyssa and check those out. Okay, so anyway, so that's, I was hoping to be farther along today, but I got caught up in fiddling with my fitting, but I thought it was interesting that you could go back to a single leg muslin after you already cut out both and sewed them together to test fit them. So um, if anybody has any, you know, questions about their pants they're working on, please, you know, let me know. I will help you. If anybody missed it, on Wednesdays, I'm going to do subscriber Q&A live at 1 o'clock on Wednesday afternoons now because I'm finding that I'm spending a lot of um, time sitting in front of my computer answering questions for people. And sometimes if it's a complicated or involved question, I'll spend 20, 25 minutes answering one person. So if questions or when questions like that come up, I'm going to actually save them and share them in um, subscriber Q&A at J Stern Designs live. And, I, and I'll let you know, like if you post a question under a video and it's a little bit involved and I'm going to include it in this week coming up, I will tell you in the comment, I'll comment back to you to tell you it's going to be there. So if you want to join me, you can. And if you can't join me live, just know it's always there for the replay. So Kelly, who asked me the question that I, I did a whole bunch of shirt fitting for her on her, based on her question, I did go back and tell her, you know, here it is. And I sent her the link so she can go back and look at it. So even if you can't make it live to the Q and A, they do live on my channel and you'll be able to watch them later. Ooh, hi, the fabric teapot. I love your pink high hand. That's kind of cool. Um, so that's, that's what's happening. Um, I have one more tr pants fitting troubleshooting fit tip Tuesday to go. I'm going to show you how to go about sewing your fit muslin and I'm going to give you some tips for, um, fitting the waistband onto you, which can also cause issues if you don't do that the right way or make sure you're fitted properly before you start draping the fabric off of the waistband. So that's going to be Fit Tip Tuesday next week. Um, and then I'll be wrap, I'll be having a subscriber Q&A where I will be dealing with, if you have a shirt, everything's fitting except you have fabric bunching up at the base of your back neckline, um, that's what I'm going to be starting with on Wednesday next week because someone watching asked that question at the end of our video time and I said I would start with that next week. So that's what I'll be doing next week. And then I'm going to be working on a shirt. I'm going to do a a button-down shirt with a cap sleeve using my perfectly fitted shirt pattern during the Fab Fit Fridays I'm home in May. So May will be a shirt month. Um, so that's that's what we're going to be doing. Oh, oh, the fabric teapot says, hello from the UK. You love my channel. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me and following along. I really, I love that. Um, and RT Blade 4 says, greetings from Nashville. And then she's saying, do you have a video showing how to make sleeves larger to accommodate fat arms? Well, that's an interesting question because um, our, if you're on Facebook, I have a Facebook group called J Stern Designs Fit Sew Embroider. Um, the link to that Facebook group is under most of my videos. I don't think I have it under this live, but um, I can add it after I get off. And I actually showed how to pivot and trace to add two inches to the bicep line on a sleeve in the group. I have step-by-step -step photos for that. So um, let me know if you can, you know, do Facebook and if you can get over there and look at that. And if you can't, I will be, 
I can show that again during a Fit Tip Tuesday in May, because remember, May I'm doing sleeve fitting. So I'm going to try fitting the sleeve by adding extra to see if that helps um, the drape of a, fat, uh, a sleeve. I'm also going to be showing you how to um, do some other things for sleeve fitting. So I will definitely pop it into one of May's Fit Tip Tuesdays, but if you can go look at my or join my Facebook group if you're not in it already, I do have step-by-step -step pictures showing how to increase the bicep area without changing the measurement of the cap. It does flatten the cap, but that's what happens when you make the bicep bigger. Obviously, if you make this longer, the cap has to be shorter because it still has to fit into the same armhole. Um, oh, Riff Raff Ray says, hello, I have my contoured waistband ready to use. Slow sew too. We'll see when I get my pants mezzelin cut out. That's wonderful. I'm so excited to see, um, see how it's going. So just keep me posted on how your, you know, how your pants pattern or how your muslin is fitting. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's exciting. Um, oh, good. All right. So RT Blades 4 is going to join us um, on Facebook. That's exciting. And then also just you know, Fit Tip Tuesdays, I'm not live. That I, I upload for 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So it's not a live video, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a video. So there you are. So you guys have the pre-May pre calendar schedule. I will tell you, I'm going away the second weekend in May to Pennsylvania to do a jeans fitting workshop. So there will be no Fab Fit Friday the second uh, Friday in May, but the rest of the month I will be here and we'll be doing shirt shirt things. During FabFit Friday, it's going to be making a shirt with a cap sleeve, button down, and then during Fit Tip Tuesdays, it's going to be um, sleeve fitting. Oh, Mary says, thank you again for helping me with my dear, my dear in-law. Daughter-in-law, ease on her shirt. My pleasure, Mary. Um, oh, good. Captain Connie starting new shorts today. Thank you. Thank you. Time to make a waistband. Excellent. I'm so excited for you guys. And also, thank you so much for, you know, hanging out with me. I really, I really appreciate everybody who comes and joins me during these lives. I really have a fun time chatting with you guys and sharing things. And, you know, sometimes it works out that I have this masterpiece to show you today. It was more of a, ugh, it's still not fitting, but, um, I'm going to show you anyway. Oh, Captain Connie wants to know if there's openings in the jean fitting group. I don't know. There may be if you email me. So just shoot me an email at um, jsterndesigns37 at gmail. And what I'll do is I'll send um, my contact person in Pennsylvania your, your contact information so she can contact you and let you know if there's room. So it's Central PA. Um, it's going to be a Friday, Saturday, I think. Friday, Saturday. Let me tell you the dates. It's going to be May. It's going to be a Friday, Saturday event. So that's why I really can't do FabFit Friday on Friday. I'm going to drive out there on thurs Thursday, the 11th. Um, and then I'll be just popping in the I'll be popping in the car and driving home Saturday night because it's only like a four and a half hour drive from my house. So anyway, if you email if you email me, I will I will send your contact to the woman in charge of this event and she can let you know if there's room. So there. All right. So that's jeez. Oh, my calendar fell on the floor. All right. So. Up. Oh. <laughs> Um, Riff Raff Ray says, I love to see real time, the actual process would rather see that so much more useful in my humble opinion. Yes. Well, 
I do try to show you as much as I can in real time. So I, I do try to be very transparent and show you that stuff. Um, and then Fabric Teapot is saying, don't forget to click the light, bu light button, everyone. Thank you. You can be my spokesperson. I'm so bad at saying, oh, remember to subscribe and click the like, like button. I do want you to know I'm super excited that we're growing. We have almost 40,000 subscribers now. It's kind of exciting. Um, so I am gunning for that 100,000 subscriber benchmark. That's going to be super exciting. Um, probably a few years away yet, but um, I do I do find it fun watching my channel grow and meeting more and more sewers from all over the world, really. So it's, it is kind of a fun thing. So um all right, so I'm going to take off now so I can work on these. Um, I will post pictures of my progress in the Facebook group, and I can put some um, I can put some things in the community tab. If anybody didn't see, the other thing I started again is I'm going to start blogging again. So if you want to read my blog posts, they're going to be on Monday. Um, they're going to launch on Mondays. And it's going to be something that I'm working on, like pop-up projects or things that happen during the week that are not on my calendar. So I had to hem a, um, a dress for my niece. So I showed how to hem a chiffon skirt. And then this week I'm going to show you how I shorten the straps. So um, the blog post will be available on my homepage of my website or you could probably subscribe to my blog so you can just get it you know, get it in your email. But um, I am going to start blogging again, too. And I forgot how much I enjoy typing and, and doing blogging because before I had my YouTube channel, I was a blogger. I wasn't a vlogger. So I feel like I'm going back to my roots with that one. So it's kind of fun. But anyway, that's everything. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. So I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, have a great weekend, and I will see you next week for the final week of pants and the shorts. We'll wrap all that up next week, and then we'll start a shirt week, a shirt month in May. So there you go. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to sign off now because this is where I start to ramble. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to say goodbye. And I'll see you all next Friday or Wednesday for subscriber Q&A. So thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye, Judy. Judith, thank you. Hope to see you Wednesday and watch your Tuesday. Thanks. I hope so too, Riff Raff. Ray, thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.